Now, your primetime local news leader, Fox 22 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, a woman will spend six years in prison for manslaughter and the death of her newborn daughter more than 35 years ago. Police arrested Leanne Daigle, formerly of Lowell, Massachusetts, in June of 2022. She pleaded guilty to manslaughter in April. Baby Jane Doe was abandoned in a gravel pit in Frenchville in December of 1985. A dog found the infant's body in some bushes and took it back home to its owners. During sentencing, Assistant Attorney General Suzanne Russell said Daigle planned to abandon her full-term baby and let it die. Being aware that adoption was a choice, she thought about it and dismissed it. She made the decision quote, to get rid of it well before the birth. She was aware of the consequences of leaving a baby on the ground in below zero weather. Daigle told the court she had made a big mistake in 1985 when she left the baby in the gravel pit and that she's a different person now. I hope you will take into consideration who I am today, who I have proven myself to be a good daughter, sister, mother, grandmother, and friend. I made a mistake and I will live with that. I could have done more. I should have done more. I cannot correct the past, but I can and will continue to move forward. The judge noted the 37 years that have passed since Daigle abandoned the baby, saying that she had all that time to come forward. She was sentenced to 16 years in prison with all but six years suspended. Daigle will also serve three years probation once she is released. An arrest has been made in last night's shooting in Westbrook that left two people dead. Brad Rogers has more. Someone's dead, 100%, because there was multiple shots. Oh, All I hear is bop, 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 at least 10 or 15 times, mm -hmm. and then I ran down here. Witnesses to the double homicide in Westbrook heard multiple gunshots around 8.30 last night from what one witness describes as a small black pistol in the gunman's hand. It happened in this parking lot near the corner of Bridge and Main Streets. The entire shooting videotaped on this surveillance camera pointing directly at the alleged gunman and his victims. Assad Khalif was working in the Arabic market. He says he saw a gunman in his mid-20s shoot and kill a man in a car with his seatbelt on and then shoot and kill a woman as she got out of the car to try to run. Mm -hmm. He says both were shot multiple times. Uh, he said five on the female and three on the male. Khalif says he could hear children screaming as he saw the gunman run toward Main Street with officers chasing him. That's when he realized the screams were coming from two children in the back seat of the victim's car. There's a couple in the front and two kids in the back. They were unharmed. Assad Khalif and another man got the children out of the car and tried to shield them from seeing the bodies. He says the, the, a, pro, a, a big problem is the, the mom and the dad being killed in the shooting. And the biggest problem is that the two kids had to witness this. And that was Brad Rogers reporting. Meanwhile, the fire marshal's office is investigating the discovery of a homemade explosive device near a home in Woodland. A state police spokesperson says on Friday morning, the Aroostook County Sheriff's Office responded to a home on Tabor Road after the homeowner discovered the explosive device in his driveway. The main state police bomb unit was called in and rendered that device safe. State police say no one was injured and there is no ongoing threat to the public. Anyone who might have information about the incident should call the state police Holton Barracks. That number is 532-5400 and ask for Fire Marshal Investigator Brady Smith. Well, owners of a beloved Ellsworth business are speaking out after an alleged robbery last week. Our David Ledford spoke with the owners and community members about what exactly happened. It's shocking, to tell you the truth. I mean, we, we respect each other, we trust each other, and that shouldn't happen here. Momo's Cheesecakes in Ellsworth was robbed last week, according to the owners. The bakery has operated for years on the honor system. You can stop by day or night for a slice of cheesecake, leaving cash or paying through Venmo. However, the owners say that around 3 a.m. on Friday last week, a male figure in a hoodie stole an unknown amount of cash from their change box after taking a slice of cheesecake and a drink. The owners say this isn't the first time someone has taken advantage of the honor system. Everybody that, that um, work hard for what they have, 
and these people just come and take everything away. Uh, it's sad, it's just sad. Despite the incident, the owners say they aren't making any changes to the honor system because they want customers to be able to pick up their own treats on their own time. Everybody's busy, different schedules. It's, it's open to anybody at any time of day. Um, and everybody's been great. And why, why stop it? Because people want to be back, you know. They have to sleep with it at night, I don't. This our livelihood too, you know. We don't want to stop it because it's how we make our living. Customers say that Momo's and its honor system are a staple of the community. I think it's really neat that Momo's, you know, trusts its public, trusts its customers, and it's just really disheartening to see someone come through and do something like that to a small business in Maine. People come from all over. You talk to people from far and wide, and, and when you tell them you're from the area, the first thing they want to know is if you've gotten cheesecake. <laughs> The owners say they don't wish to involve the police at this time, but will be bringing in their change box at night to avoid future incidents. If you're looking for a late night snack, you'll have to bring exact change. In Ellsworth, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Advocates rallied at the State House to, on Tuesday, both for and against the expansion of Maine's reproductive laws. LD 1619 was introduced by Governor Mills. It changes the standard for when an abortion may be performed after viability to when a licensed physician determines that it is necessary instead of only when it is necessary to preserve the life or health of the mother. It also removes criminal penalties for performing an abortion after viability of a fetus for the preservation of the health or life of the mother. Additionally, the bill reaffirms that an abortion should be performed by a physician, physician's assistant, or advanced practice, practice registered nurse, but it removes the criminal penalty if it is performed by someone other than those professionals. This is just a bill that supports people and being able to make not just the choice, but to be able to care for themselves um, and their body. Diminishing the value of human life to a point that it will not be respected at all. And what kind of society is that to live in, especially for our children? When abortion is reported would also be changed under the bill requiring specific data such as date and time, but not any information identifying a patient. LD 1619 is still waiting on votes from both the Senate and House. Meanwhile, a bill aiming to authorize harm reduction health centers that would allow for illicit drug use under supervision was narrowly defeated in the main Senate tonight. LD 1364, an act to prevent opioid overdose deaths by establishing safe consumption sites, would authorize the establishment and operation of facilities where people could use drugs procured elsewhere under the supervision of medical personnel, though not necessarily physicians. Individual municipalities would have had to authorize the facility first following a public meeting. Harm reduction health centers have been in operation around the world for over three decades. During that time, they have been studied at length and time and time again, these sources tell us that these centers reduce crime, overdoses, community costs for emergency health care service, public drug use, and syringe waste in parks. The bill as written is also a huge invitation to undermining the criminal justice system, the bill says that if you're in probation or on probation or on bail, you can go to these sites and engage in as much drug activity as you want to and nobody can prosecute you. I don't know if that's what any person in this room wants to have happen. This is basically a backdoor decriminalization bill. LD 1364 would also offer immunity from prosecution for users and center staff. The bill was voted down 16 yeses, 18 noes, but an amendment related to the bill was passed authorizing further study of the issue. Well, the wet and cool spring has been a topic of discussion for people across our state, but imagine if you didn't have a roof over your head. Seeing the unhoused struggle in the rain prompted a group of volunteers to make a difference. Washing and drying bedding for those who don't have a home in Augusta. Owen Kingsley has the story. It's damp. I guess I'm inspired to do something because there are hands-on things you can do to make a difference. Jackie Clark saw the wet sleeping bags and the poor conditions people were left to sleep in. So she began to recruit others like Jonathan and Jennifer with the same passion to help. It breaks my heart, honestly, when I see, you know, people suffering. They've helped around 30 people in just the past few weeks get warm, dry bedding. 
and the need is growing. This effort began with just a few volunteers doing some laundry and became a network of dozens of people that call themselves the Our Unhoused Response System. So, uh, basically, we have this little mobile unit, me and my partner, Jennifer. Jonathan Reynolds is formally unhoused. Now his boots are on the ground helping. And we know exactly how they feel. And I remember feeling like that. And I remember somebody made me feel like they actually cared for me. And just that little bit of hope made me want to get up and try to do the next right thing to get my life back together. It's great. Volunteers go beyond cleaning sleeping bags. They spend a lot of time um, um, resourcing food and um, giving rides to people. They all do. Um, they have uh, breakfast for us and helping with whatever way they could, you know, and even taking money out of their own pockets to do that. You know. Their message is to show how simple it can be to help. Because if you think that they belong to the town or they belong to some nonprofit, you've missed the point. These are our family members, our neighbors. And that was Owen Kingsley reporting is certainly a great reminder of the importance of paying it forward whenever you can. Yeah, it just goes to show that one person really can make a difference. Yeah, because, you know, that, that one person who's now starting this effort, who's now part of the effort to help the unhoused, was once himself. And right. he said himself, you know, that, that hope that someone who helped me gave me is what inspired me to do this. Yeah. So you start that chain reaction. It's great to see. All righty. Well, well, we can go ahead and uh, take a first look at our forecast. <laughs> I just hope it's a dry one. Yep, me too. <laughs> Hey, Beth, thank you. Your first weather is brought to you by Webb's RV. Check out the spring and summer specials on RVs and campers. Don't forget, we have the sharpest pencil in town. And all right, we have some pretty nice temperatures around town today. But this is a bit cool for the last day of spring today. First day of summer is tomorrow. And we're going to warm things up again with temperatures hanging out near 80 across much of the area tomorrow. Outside today, still some cloud cover, a couple sprinkles out there. It's all kind of fading away now. Tomorrow is going to be lots of sunshine. We're getting into this this air mass finally that is sunshine clear skies all moving our direction for a couple of days around here our forecast ends tonight though we're talking about decreasing clouds low temperatures hanging out in the 50s your full forecast is coming up beth all righty jeff thanks so much so at least a decent overnight heading our way yep and more on that to come all right and also still to come on fox 22 news at 10 our devin dagnall will have a story about a rock that's got as much to do with archaeology as it does geology. And Quality Jewelers will be sending eight veterans to an upcoming concert. I'll tell you why with those stories and more coming right up. We're lucky to live in Maine. We have a wealth of natural resources, hardworking people, and time for the things that matter. Mechanical services is all about Maine with energy efficiency that protects our environment and helps businesses grow. Preventive maintenance and energy solutions that save money. How mean is that? Mechanical services, we're everywhere you are in Maine. When you've experienced fire and smoke damage in your home, when pipes break and you have water everywhere, when you're concerned about your family's health because of mold, you need a friendly face to take care of it all. You need the friendly faces of Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. We're just a click or call away. Whatever life throws at you, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is here for you. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories. We'll handle the rest. Why should your new floor come from Carpet One? Because we're passionate about the spaces our neighbors call home. We're part of your community, and we're also part of the world's largest cooperative of independently owned and operated flooring stores. So you can be sure you'll get great selection and outstanding value with every installation. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, tile, or luxury vinyl, our experts take the guesswork out of choosing the right floor. We're your local Carpet One Floor and Home, the one store for your perfect floor. Spend an evening with James Taylor and his all-star band. The American Icon is back on tour, June 27th at Maine Savings Amphitheater. The multiple Grammy Award-winning James Taylor and a night full of his biggest hits. Tickets on sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Spend the night with a friend, James Taylor. Where in America do the best coats come from? Four regions, 20 contestants. Sharpen your knives. Master Chef United Tastes of America, Wednesdays on Fox. 
Hello, I'm Emma Smith, and coming up on Good Morning Maine, we'll hear what the literacy volunteers of Bangor were up to in downtown Bangor in order to promote literacy. Plus, we'll get the latest numbers from the Maine Loon Census on how the population is faring. And we'll get a glimpse of the new Maine-made shop inside the Bangor Mall. Welcome back. A Habitat consultant has made a discovery that's left local historians stumped for the time being. Our Devin Dagnold explains. And I've been all over the place and seen all kinds of things all over the state of Maine, and I've never seen anything like that. Last April, Kathy Pollard was strolling a trail in the woods between Old Town and Orono when she discovered a particularly interesting rock. But it's not just any rock. It's a boulder with names and dates carved into it that appear to date as far back as the early 1800s. I was walking my grand puppy one April morning when the sun was coming up over the trees and it was casting light at just the right angle so that as I was walking past the rock I happened to glance down and the inscriptions were very visible. After the initial discovery, Pollard returned time and time again to uncover a little more history with each visit. But it seemed the more she uncovered, the less she understood. It just seems to be pretty random. The names and dates all seem to have no pattern, with only a few sharing a similar font. Historical records show a railroad ran nearby during the mid-1800s, which led Pollard to believe it may have something to do with railroad workers. Old Town Museum president Iso Otsuma was the one to point out the railroad correlation, but the discovery has brought him to the hypothesis that the stone may be an indicator for a hobo trail or encampment. Neither canon has been confirmed nor disproven, and more research will be done to find an answer. But until then, the rock remains a mystery. One of the things we're hoping for is that some people may hear this story and hear about the rock and, you know, might have some family history that aligns with that. In Old Town, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Glad to see the dog getting in on the fun there, too. Meanwhile, Quality Jewelers in Bangor is kicking off its summer concert series promotion by sending eight Maine veterans to the upcoming Kane Brown concert. Grace Blanchard has the story. In partnership with Maine Savings Amphitheater, Quality Jewelers is back with their Finders Keepers promotion, where they are hiding 3D printed coins all throughout the greater Bangor area. However, the prize for finding these boxes is a little different than expected. Instead of jewelry this time, I decided whoever finds it, they get concert tickets. Then when a plus one gets to go. So. LeClaire says they have purchased enough tickets to send eight people to each concert in the VIP booths. Got a direct sight line right to the stage. It's, they're great seats, and uh, I'm very happy to be able to offer that to my customers. The Maine Veterans Project reached out to LeClaire after seeing the promotion. Without hesitation, LeClaire decided to send eight veterans to the upcoming Kane Brown concert on the waterfront. I'm very happy to be able to be in a position to uh, pass those tickets along to those very deserving folks. Isolation is one of the biggest things we try to mitigate at Maine Veterans Project. So for a veteran to be able to come out to an amazing event like this with a safe group of veterans and especially to be in a, an exclusive box where they feel nice and safe is just magical. Doc Goodwin, president of the Maine Veterans Project, says opportunities like this are important for the Maine veteran community. Goodwin says they received an outpouring of interest from other veterans and decided to purchase more tickets. And with help from the Maine Savings Amphitheater, they are able to send 20 more to the concert. He, uh, you know, we waived a bunch of fees and did a bunch of stuff to try and make it a little easier on them because they've, uh, I don't think they anticipated this kind of response. And, uh, and, and again, we want to make sure that they can, uh, you know, they can take care of all the vets. Anybody interested in getting a chance to win concert tickets this summer should keep an eye out on Quality Jewelers' Facebook page. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A well-known business owner and leader in Maine Radio has died. Natalie Knox, co-owner of the radio station Star 97.7 in Ellsworth, passed away following her battle with cancer. Knox was an innovator who helped bring popular radio stations to down east and central Maine. Radio stations like KISS 94.5, Lucky 99, and 104.7, The Bear. 
Last year, Knox and her business partner Mark Osborne, Osborne were presented with the Ellsworth Chamber of Commerce's Top Drawer Award. The award is presented to a company or individual that has made a substantial contribution to the growth, development and improvement of the community. Natalie Knox was 68 years old. Here at Twin City Tire and Service, you will be working with industry professionals. We have ASE certified master technicians and certified tire and loop technicians. If we need your vehicle for a duration of time, we offer a complimentary shuttle service and can even offer a loaner vehicle. Being a client at Twin City Tire and Service means that we will treat you right. This includes a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty on mechanical repairs. We also provide you with one year of complimentary roadside assistance. Come see us today at Twin City Tire and Service in Brewer. If you're waiting for a sign that it's time to finally tackle that window or patio door project you've been putting off, here it is. Renewal by Anderson's incredible Window Replacement Days celebration. Act now because during this limited time event, you'll get stunning custom replacement windows and patio doors for less. Get all the benefits of Renewal by Anderson's exclusive and easy replacement window and door process and save a lot of money while you're at it. This opportunity won't be sticking around for long and neither will these savings. Schedule your free design consultation now and call Renewal by Anderson to Looking to haul a new piece of equipment? Homeowners or commercial, Coops Truck and Equipment has the right trailer for you. Coops is the largest dealer of truck flatbeds and hauler bodies in this state and can replace any old rusty bed or outfit any new truck. Our full service facility can modify all truck and trailers with steel and aluminum fabricators on duty. We are your go-to place for CM truck bodies, H&H trailers, and load trail trailers. For trailers, truck bodies, truck outfitting, and more, it's Coops. Pepper's Landing is the definition of authentic Maine dining. Named in honor of our grandfather, the primary focus at Pepper's Landing is offering a variety of fresh, locally harvested seafood to all. We take pride in our quality and selection, but it doesn't end with just seafood. We also offer delicious selections of burgers, pasta, steaks, and more. So stop in to any of our locations and see what Pepper's Landing is all about. Approximately 50,000 kids, like Brooke, receive care at Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center each year. You can help them by supporting the Summer Classic for Maine Kids. This new tournament will help all kids receiving care at Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center by raising funds to ensure that pediatric care is available today, tomorrow, and in the years ahead. Every dollar raised helps kids get back to the business of being kids. For more information about the event and how to donate, please visit northernlight.org slash for kids. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. The clock is ticking in the race to find a submersible that went missing off the coast of Newfoundland. Right now, officials are combing the Atlantic for any evidence of the sub. Four people and a pilot were on board as it submerged off the coast of Newfoundland. To visit the shipwreck site of the Titanic, Fox's Molly Line has more. Stands right now, it would be a miracle if they are recovered alive. There's still no sign of the submersible with five people on board that disappeared on a voyage to visit the Titanic wreckage at the bottom of the North Atlantic. This is a complex search effort. The Titan sub, missing since Sunday, is running out of oxygen as the international search effort continues some 900 miles east of Cape Cod. We are doing everything we can in terms of surveying the area, and that's been um, the focus. You're dealing with a surface search and a subsurface search, and frankly, that makes it an incredibly complex operation. The U.S. Coast Guard is leading the mission, saying they've covered a 7,600 square nautical mile area so far, roughly the size of the state of Connecticut. One of the biggest challenges is the depth the sub may have already reached, potentially 13,000 feet below the surface. The U.S. and Canadian navies are assisting, with French authorities also throwing in their help. Aircraft, submarines, and specialized equipment with sonar buoys are being deployed, along with civilian vessels. By the end of today, we would have committed three C-130s to conducting search and rescue flights. Those on board include the CEO of the company OceanGate, which operates the submersible, along with a British businessman, a French mariner, and a Pakistani mogul and his son. There's some folks that like to get out and do adventures, and something like this certainly comes with risk. The weather conditions and visibility improved on Tuesday, but crews contended with waves five to six feet high. In Boston, Molly Line, Fox News. 
An independent health panel is recommending all adults under the age of 65 be regularly screened for anxiety and depression. This is the first time the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force has recommended anxiety screenings. It's already been recommending assessments for depression since 2002. This updated guidance also highlights the need to screen pregnant women and those who have given birth within the past year. It does not, however, find a need to screen for anxiety in seniors due to, quote, insufficient evidence. The panel, which is made up of independent health experts, volunteered their time to analyze scientific data on the subject of anxiety. Their recommendation was published in the medical journal JAMA, or Journal of the American Medical Association, on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Hunter Biden striking a deal with the Department of Justice to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax offenses and avoid prosecution on a felony firearms charge. And while the president is standing behind his son, critics say the deal amounts to a slap on the wrist. Fox's Lauren Blanchard has more. The president and first lady are standing by their son, Hunter Biden, saying they love and support him as he rebuilds his life. But some Republicans are criticizing his plea deal, saying the president's son got a sweetheart deal. I'm very proud of my son. In California, President Biden asked about his son's plea deal, in which Hunter Biden will plead guilty to two federal tax misdemeanors for failing to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes on time. The deal also addresses a gun charge for illegally possessing a firearm as a drug user in 2018. Sources say the 53-year-old will get probation instead of jail time, as long as he adheres to the conditions. The judge is going to do what's fair, and I think what's fair is you know, my client gets on with his life. Critics are saying the president's son got off easy. If there was ever any doubt whether or not there's a different standard of justice, if your last name's Biden versus Trump, uh, this surely shows it. Meanwhile, House Republicans are doubling down, saying they'll continue their own investigation into Hunter Biden and the Biden family finances. Now, this does nothing to our investigation. It actually should enhance our investigations because the DOJ should not be able to withhold any information now. As of now, there is no timeline for when Hunter will appear in court to enter his plea. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. While tech companies tout the promise of artificial intelligence, President Biden and lawmakers from both parties are voicing their concerns. Whether AI turns out to be a panacea or a Pandora's box remains to be seen. Fox's Madeline Rivera reports from Washington. Apprehension over artificial intelligence. The feeling is spreading in the nation's capital as the technology also grows. Clearly, AI is the hot topic of the year, and you've seen that within the stocks that are involved in AI. From science to music, AI has the potential to transform a range of industries. But industry experts also warn AI could one day threaten humanity. Now, President Biden wants input from tech leaders to find out how to curb that risk without stifling the technology's progress. I have a lot to learn, and we also have a lot to discuss. Congress is also eager to act. Congress cannot be behave like ostriches in the sand when it comes to AI. On Tuesday, a bipartisan group of lawmakers introduced a bill to create a national commission to focus on regulating AI. We also have to be humble and understand that there's a lot we don't know. And as members of Congress, we have to acknowledge that we have to have experts sometimes advise us on new technologies. Still, one expert urges the need to strike a balance. Government should take a slow approach in this. They should, should try to learn as much as they can. But obviously, overregulation is the last thing you want with an emerging technology. On Wednesday, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is expected to outline upcoming legislative efforts. A group of senators are planning to hold a series of briefings on the subject in the summer. In Washington, Matt Rivera, Fox News. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, thousands across the country are struggling to stay safe as they face everything from severe heat waves to tornadoes. And in sports, it is state championship day, y'all. All the highlights from all eight games coming up. Summit Nationals, Sunday at 4 Eastern on Fox. Looking to buy or sell a home? The more true team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the more true team a call today or visit their Facebook page.
ain't got the sharpest pencil in town And they just sit around that showroom figuring deals And whittling that old pencil down They know that if you buy once, you're gonna be back So instead of buying one, you're buying two, and that's a fact They've got the sharpest pencil in town So come on down, neighbor, the coffee pot's on I think this is it, guys When the Martins booked their verbal vacation home They really weren't looking for much A patch of grass for Bruno A pool for first-timers And time with each other And when they needed support Someone was right there. I got you. Because what's unique about a Verbo is you can reach a real person in about a minute. Harvey High is now in session. Today's subjects, biology. Name an animal with a long neck. Dinosaur. Long neck, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you something. When the last time you've seen one? Anatomy. Name a part of Steve Harvey that a woman might want to kiss. Your six pack. The six pack? Does she know who Steve Harvey is? <laughs> you got to dig for it, but it's in there. Get school with Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. Looking to buy or sell a home? The More True team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the More True team a call today or visit their Facebook page. The violence in Israel and Palestine is still escalating with no end in sight. Fox's Trey Yingst has more from Jerusalem. More violence in the West Bank. Palestinian militants attacking civilians at a gas station near an Israeli settlement Tuesday. Multiple people were killed and others wounded before one of the shooters was taken out by a bystander. This is just the latest in a surge of violence that has resulted in near daily clashes between Israelis and Palestinians. This is unacceptable. This is our home, this is our life, and we should be able to live our lives every day without being afraid, without someone taking the liberty to come and murder innocent people. Israeli security forces say they searched for the second suspect and ultimately located and killed him. Local media reports the gunman's driver was seen speeding away when the shooting started. The attack came just a day after the biggest battle in the West Bank in almost 20 years. Israeli forces coming under heavy fire during a raid, calling in a helicopter gunship for backup after arresting suspected militants at a Palestinian refugee camp. We are striking the terrorists with strength and determination. Our forces eliminated several terrorists and arrested others. The spike in violence is being fueled in part by the Israeli government's support for new settlements in the West Bank. Thousands are set to be approved next week, prompting a sharp response from the United Nations. Settlements in the Palestinian territory, in the occupied Palestinian territory, are not legally valid and constitute a, fr a flagrant violation of international law. Hamas, the group in control of Gaza with a large presence in the West Bank, claimed responsibility for today's attack. In Jerusalem, Trey Yingst, Fox News. In other news, right now, much of the central U.S. is still baking under triple digits as a massive heat wave extends its stay. It's prompting heat warnings from Texas to the upper Midwest, and some of those same communities are also dealing with damage from recent tornadoes. Fox's Garrett Tenney has details. Be outside for more than 15 minutes, I feel like, without being drenched in yes. sweat. A record-breaking heat wave is gripping the central U.S. this week as temperatures hover 10 to 15 degrees above average, even soaring into the triple digits in some states. On Tuesday, about 32 million people remained under heat advisories, including parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and New Mexico. It's almost like being like in a sauna. You're going to be sweating out here. You're going to get dehydrated. The high temperatures are triggering a series of southern storms. In Mississippi, recovery efforts are underway after multiple tornadoes hit overnight Sunday. Row after row of homes flattened by the twisters. In the town of Lowen, one person was killed and nearly two dozen were injured. Cleanup efforts also underway in Perryton, Texas. Days after a tornado touched down in the small town, killing three people. I mean, it was just so fast. The lights flickered and went out and then we ran down to the basement and uh, 
We were safe and we're blessed. A funnel cloud caught on camera in Miramar Beach, Florida Monday as gusty winds and torrential rain triggered flooding in some parts of the state. The severe storms moving east to parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia Tuesday, with the possibility of tornadoes tearing through, making the upcoming days uncertain. I have no place to go. It happened too late in the day, and I, I kind of don't know what's next. Making matters worse, more than 350,000 customers from Texas to Tennessee are enduring the heat without power due to the weather. In Chicago, I'm Garrett Tenney, Fox News. And the weather here at home, not quite, you know, a little unreliable, but yeah. nowhere near what other folks are dealing with for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it hasn't been ideal here uh, lately, but it sounds like things could start to heat up as we officially enter summer. We'll get a little summer weather coming right up, folks. The full five days on its way. Well, this was fun. High temperatures up near 70 today, but if you want warmer, hold on for one more day. Here we go, up near 80 tomorrow, and then maybe even warmer by the weekend. Full details coming up. Our phones keep us constantly connected, but what if they had a mode to help us actually connect, to limit screen time, but not quality time, and to give us rhythm instead of algorithms? Introducing Us Mode. Set your phone for human connection at U.S. Cellular. Family owned and operating in the Bangor area for more than 10 years, Crosby's Welding is here to help you. We specialize in steel, stainless steel, and aluminum welding and fabrication. We serve many of the local industries from Maine lobstermen to the commercial trucking industry and everything in between. Fully mobile on-site construction services right down to custom signs and fire pits. Fast, friendly, reliable service. Give us a call today for a free estimate, 974-7815. It's summer and the savings are heating up at the Furniture Gallery. Sofas starting at $399. Recliners starting at $299. Queen mattresses also starting at $299. Ashley Flex Steel Nectar, Restonic, and Serta. If it's in stock, it's yours to take home today. So what are you waiting for? The Furniture Gallery Summer Savings Sale is huge. Special financing is available. Support our main family-owned business and save money. Your best value is always at the Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Newport, and North Windham. Toyota trains certified technicians. Is that important? Well, you wouldn't hire just anyone to help you move, would you? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. Mm. Not again. Get your Toyota ready for that summer road trip. See your New England Toyota dealer for great service offers to help keep your Toyota dependable and fuel efficient all summer long. Toyota Service Centers. Keep your Toyota a Toyota. Right now at U.S. Cellular, you can get a new phone without having to trade in your old one. Trade you my PB&J for that phone. No, kid, you don't have to trade. See? $1,100 off any phone at U.S. Cellular. No trade-in needed. Boom. Chocolate milk. I'll take the chocolate milk. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. I'm looking for a partner that I can invest a quarter of a million dollars in. I'm looking for my next food star. Gordon Ramsay's Food Stars, Wednesdays on Fox. Here we go. Your full weather is brought by the Blue Alpaca Ranch and Store. Visit our ranch and meet the alpacas or shop in our store in downtown Belfast. Let's talk about this temperature-wise today. So, okay, comfortable, but not where they're supposed to be temperature-wise across our area today. 71 here in Bangor. But hold on if you like warmer. Again, the first day of summer is tomorrow. Tonight's the last night of spring. It's going to be even warmer across our area tomorrow. Right now, the wind is going calm across much of our region. That uh, signals a wind shift on the way for tomorrow. A southeast breeze will kick in around five miles per hour throughout the afternoon, pushing in some warmer temperatures for us. Until then, though, there could be some dense fog in there again. So as you're traveling three, four, five o'clock in the morning, you know the routine uh, to get through the dense fog. Okay, so let's talk about air quality right now looking good across our region, but it'll likely go downhill again. There's still lots of smoke back off to our north and west in the upper atmosphere with our new weather pattern coming our way and the kind of the stagnant air 
air, uh, we're likely to have our air quality decrease once again, especially probably Thursday into Friday with that high pressure building in. For today, though, lots of clouds around again. A couple of sprinkles, not a big deal. But overall, the back edge of the clouds is right there. You see it? That's moving our direction. So we will break into the clear skies tonight. And once we do, look off to the west of us. This, this is our air mass. This is high pressure. High pressure is sinking air. You can't get bad weather out of that. Everything kind of goes up and around it. You see that happening right there. And that's going to keep us dry for several days until most likely the weekend. Our next chance for rain gets in here over the weekend. Future cash shows the story. So uh, some dense fog out there for tonight. Tomorrow is going to be lots of clear skies across the entire area for tomorrow into Friday and most likely into probably Saturday morning. Uh, it's going to be a nice few days, but a warming trend kicking in as well. That's going to get things pretty hot around here. So for right now, here is our weather decreasing clouds tonight, but the tropics are getting active. Here is Brett right there. Uh, Brett likely doing something like this in the southern Caribbean Sea there. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that for you next week if it decides to curve a bit north. Our forecast then tonight, though, is decreasing clouds, low temperatures down near 52, and a calm wind already out there now for tomorrow. Look at this. Lots of sunshine tomorrow. High temperatures reaching for 80. We'll probably stop just short tomorrow. High near 77 with a calm wind pretty much all day long. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows the story. So 77 tomorrow. We earn that. Thursday, 83. Lots of sunshine. Friday, 84. Lots of sunshine. And there's the weekend. A good chance for some thunder showers Saturday into Sunday with slightly cooler temperatures in the upper 70s. Beth. All right, so a nice end to the week. Definitely like to see that. Yes, I, and I like how Jeff put it. I think we've des we deserve it at this point. Yeah, the weekend's a ways away, so maybe we'll see that shift a little bit. Let's hope so. All righty. All right, well, sports is coming up next. Stay with us. Have you always dreamed of having a beautiful green lawn? Let Maine Lawn Pros help. Featuring hydro seeding, the fast, affordable, and effective way to achieve the lawn of your dreams. Hydro seeding is a process that involves spraying a mixture of grass seed, fertilizer, and mulch onto your lawn. The result? A beautiful green lawn in no time. Hydro seeding is perfect for both residential and commercial properties alike. So why wait? Call Maine Lawn Pros today to help you get the lawn you've always wanted with hydro seeding. 416-6122. Wherever you are, whether you're ready or not, it's coming with a purpose, with persistence, with the power to change the way you live. So you don't have to change the way you live. Generac Automatic Standby Generators. Control your power. Control your life. Visit Generac.com. Oh, that feels so good. What a sweetheart. I'm so lucky. These socks are so soft. And her feet don't smell? These would be perfect for hunting season. Moisture wicking, odor resistant, hypoallergenic, softer than cashmere and warmer than wool. Get your alpaca socks and more at the Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Hey babe, can I borrow these socks? Ahoy there, boating enthusiasts. Get ready to elevate your boating experience with a Bennington Pontoon Boat Happy Hour at Amlin's Marina in Hamden. Join us on Thursday, June 22nd from 4 to 6 p.m. for an exciting evening filled with boat demo rides on our most popular pontoon models. But that's not all. Snacks and beverages will be provided by Kimberly's at the Marina. The Bennington Pontoon Boat Happy Hour, Thursday, June 22nd from 4 to 6 p.m. only at Hamlin's Marina in Hamden. We'll see you there. Tonight Sports is brought to you by Ansley Moore, a realtor since 2013, working throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Welcome back in, everyone, and thank you for staying with us. Well, after several postponements this postseason, the big day is here. State Championship Day was on Tuesday. Eight winners to be crowned. We're going to start with some Class B baseball. Old Town looking for two state titles in three years. Yarmouth, their first since 2017. Bottom four here, no score. Brendan Mahaney lines one to first. David Swift snags it, tags first, inning ending double play. Next inning, Liam Hickey K's Matt Braun. Graham Rue fires to second to catch Alex McCannell. That's a strike him out, throw him out. 
out to end the frame. Top five, Old Town's Gabe Gifford. Great inning. Strikes out the first batter, fields his position well for the ground out in the second, and then another strikeout ends it. We are still scoreless. Bottom six here, Lucas Moore at bat. James Dumond on second. He lifts this one to left. Dumond coming all the way around to score, and that run would be the difference. Old Town wins Class B. One to nothing is the final. Gabe Gifford, a complete game, two hitter. We did everything right today. Even though we weren't getting the runs in that we needed, we left a lot of runners on base. We came through, and I told the boys, just give me one, and I'll, I can do it for us. All right, now to the Class B softball title in the Comus and York battle on a beautiful night at Coffin Field in Brewer. Top of the second here, no score. Ella Moon up for York, and she hammers this one the other way, deep to right field, and that one is gone. Gives the Wildcats a one to nothing lead. Put the chain on her. Uh, next inning we go after Megan Watson leads off with a double. She scores from third on this pass ball. Nice slide, knocks the ball out, gets her in safely. We are tied at one. Wildcats now, Ella Hickey on second. The pinch hitter, Bella Santini, the freshman, ropes this one to right. That's going to give York a two to one lead. Slides home safely there. Warriors with a chance now in the fifth with the bases loaded. The slow roller to third, and they're going to get the force out at home just in time to save the lead. And that would be the difference. York wins the Class B softball gold glove. Final score on that one is 2-1. to one. In Class C, we had Monmouth Academy battling Bucksport. This one is some baseball. Top one and the Golden Bucks loading them up. But the Mustangs ace Sam Calder is going to get the huge strikeout. Ball comes loose, but Calder will tag the plate to end the threat with a heads-up play. Bottom one, we go now. Mustangs threatening with two on. Here's a pass ball here, allowing Kyle Polelski to score from third. Mustangs now with a one to nothing lead. Bucksport star starter Gavin Holyoke, though, is going to get out of the jam here with a huge strikeout. So to the bottom of the third we go. Here come the Mustangs again with two on. Manny Calder ropes a single into right field as Monmouth Academy will take a three to nothing lead. Both runners score. He slides in safely right there. Everybody's happy to the top of the seventh we go. Last call for Bucksport. Pulaski squeezes the final out leading Monmouth Academy to the Class C State Championship. Three to nothing is the final over Bucksport. Congratulations to the Mustangs coach Eric Pulaski. Today's state championship was the 200th win of his career. Over on the softball diamond now, top-seeded Bucksport facing defending champs Haldale. We're going to pick it up in the six. We're tied at one. Haldale with a runner on third. Jade Graham delivers a long sack fly to center, easily scoring Zoe Sewell, and that is going to make it two to one Bucksport when that run comes around. Top seven now, last call for the Bucks. Rita Benoit gets the little ground out to end it right there. Haldale makes it three straight Class C state championships, two to one over Bucksport. All right, let's do some Class D softball now. Top seed North Yarmouth taking on the Machias Bulldogs. Bottom of the first, dog strike first. Leadoff hitter Jada Case rips one to right field. That's right near living room, and that is a triple. She would later score the first run of the game. Top of the second now. Check out this play from Machias shortstop Malia Rhodes falling to the ground. Did Dez catch it? I don't know, but she did. That retires the side, but eventually the Panthers' bats would get going. Runner on second here for Lily Ronsley. She lifts this one in. That drops in no. No man's land, and this game is tied. Same inning now. It's Hayden Wynkowski up. She strokes one into left field. That's going to bring home another run. Panthers in the lead, and they wouldn't stop there. Fourth inning, Wynkowski again this time. Takes it to the right center gap. That's an RBI triple. And the Panthers win the Class D North title. 7-1 to is the final. Um, I think we've been through a couple of stressful games before, especially the regional final. We played a very good team, but we just stayed focused, kept it in it, and kept working hard. All right, now back to some baseball now at Mansfield. Class D final between Bangor Christian and St. Dom's. Top of the third now, St. Dom's Ethan Pelletier with a picture-perfect bunt here. That's going to score Ridge Dion. A little suicide squeeze action. Pelletier gets to first. It is one to nothing. Saints. Bottom three, 3-0 three now. Cole Payne up for the Patriots. It's a fly ball to shallow center. Tagging is John Benjamin from third. The throw to the plate is off. That makes it 3-1. to one. Patriots threatening. Bottom seven, 4-1, to one, two outs. Micah Roppert, a chopper on the left side. He will reach first here. Goes Jason Libby to third. And the throw from Pelletier is right on the money. That's going to end the game. St. Dom's wins 4-1. to one. They're back-to-back -back Class D champs. Ashton Hammond threw a complete game on the mound. Um, I always try to go the whole way for my team and to just be able to grind out and get through it. I didn't feel the best, but, you know, you got no excuses. you got to keep going. 
And in Class A softball, Wyndham taking the state championship and South Portland taking the Class A baseball championship as well. We are going to stay with some baseball now. Last night, the Red Sox winning their fifth straight game, beating the Twins 9-3. And Alex Cora reached a career milestone as well. The win being Cora's 400th victory as a manager and his 400th victory with the Red Sox organization. He is now the ninth Red Sox manager to reach that mark, and he is eighth in all-time games managed for Boston. He led them to a 108-win season in 2018 and a World Series title. That's a big chunk of the 400. He spent a year away due to the Astros scandal, and the organization brought him back to continue the job. Here's what he had to say following that milestone win. There's been a lot of players, a lot of coaches, different front offices, uh, same ownership, you know, and uh, the fact that they trusted me in November of 2017 and then after, you know, the suspension, they trusted me again and here we are, you know, it took a while, you know, uh, 300 was here and now 400 is here. It took a while longer than we expected, but uh, we'll keep grinding and uh, I'll tip my hat to everybody that has been part of this. They won their sixth straight tonight against the Twins. That is all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture. Affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse. Grogan Avenue in Newport. Detail 207. An average guy with the knowledge and skills to fully detail your vehicle. From cars and trucks to big rigs and motorcycles, we detail it all. If it has wheels and it isn't as clean as you'd like it to be, give me a call and we'll set up an appointment today. 659-2995. Kane Brown, Drunk or Dreaming Tour. June 22nd, Maine Savings Amphitheater, Bangor, Maine. Special guest, Gabby Barrett. And Restless Road. See one of country music's hottest superstars, Kane Brown, live. Tickets on sale now at KaneBrownMusic.com. Kane Brown. Jerry's Used Cars has been a family owned business for more than 30 years, currently in Corinna and VZ. However, we have changed a little as we are no longer just a buy here, pay here dealership. We now have access to outside financing and also carry utility trailers. We would be happy to assist you with your next vehicle purchase. And don't forget, here at Jerry's Used Cars, we offer an extended warranty. So give us a call at either our Corinna or VZ location. The bond between twins is a close one. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. Ah. As day is tonight. Would you like me to introduce you to algebra? Al who? Oh boy. And wrong is to right. They both say weird kid who eats alone. You can't have one without the other. I need my own space. But we've always shared a room. I have a training bra. When you complete your training, get back to me. Young Sheldon. Weekdays at 6 on Fox 22. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. It's your alert. Our missing person just became the prime suspect. Nicky! Don't miss alert. Thursdays on Fox. Welcome back. Golfers will be raising funds for the Eddington Clifton Civic Center this weekend. A golf scramble will be taking place at the Sawmill Woods Golf Course in Clifton. All proceeds from the tournament will benefit the Eddington Clifton Civic Center. The historic building is the community's oldest public meeting space still in operation. Right now we're doing upkeep and we're also trying to raise some monies for new kitchen appliances in our kitchen. The kitchen that we have is quite old, so we're in need of some new appliances. Pelkey says the goal is to raise $2,500 at this weekend's benefit golf tournament. 
local organizations came together to promote literacy today in downtown Bangor. The organizations collected new and gently used children's books, which will be donated to local families. The event also featured free ice cream and guest speakers, including our very own Emma Smith. For many years, the Briar Patch Bookstore, Darling's Ice Cream for a Cause, and the Literacy Volunteers of Bangor have made it their mission to help children and adults overcome and improve their reading, writing, and English-speaking skills. If we can start them young and have the, their families and their parents be able to support them in their reading and their interests, that's, that's really where we're at. For more information about the Literacy Volunteers of Bangor, you can visit lvbangor.org. A cashier in Hamden is turning a lot of heads and earning quite a reputation, too. It's because Beulah Tweedy is 90 years old and still working because she loves it. Our Jody Hersey introduces us to the loyal employee. I keep busy. I do a lot of different things. I don't, uh, nothing in particular, but I just keep busy. Don't let Beulah Tweedy's modesty fool you. This 90-year-old is still spry, agile, and earning a paycheck as a part-time cashier at Circle K in Hamden. What do the customers think? Oh, they love Beulah. They always choose her line over everybody else's. Tweedy drives herself to work three days a week, consistently clocking in for her shift for the past 19 years. I never, ever thought I'd get to be 90, let alone working. Yeah. But I'm very, very fortunate. I feel good and I'm able to do it. During her tenure behind the register, Tweedy's become a friendly face to a lot of Circle K customers. It's a pleasure to come in and, and see her. I certainly wouldn't want to still be working at 90, but it keeps her out of trouble. Otherwise, see her in a BDN and a police beat. So. Tweedy's manager says she's a top-notch employee. Everybody likes her. She's funny. Um, she gets along with everybody. There's nothing that she wouldn't do. As Tweedy will tell you, work is so much more than a job. For her, it's an opportunity to serve the community and stay in touch with the families that live here. It's not work, <laughs> but I just love the people that have been coming in and out. And the fun thing is I've watched their kids grow up and some of them now are in college, so it's been fun. In Hamden, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. I love what that guy said about it keeps her out of trouble. Otherwise, right. you'd see her in the, in the BDN and the police. <laughs> Seriously. Piece. Oh, my goodness. You can just tell by listening to the sound from those people that she's actually been able to create those genuine friendships yeah. with people. And, you know, it's easy to see why she seems like such a sweet person. She is very, very much loved. That yeah. is for sure. Mm -hmm. Already, Bila, well, you've impressed us as well. Mm -hmm. We love you, too. Indeed, we do. <laughs> Have a great night, everybody. Good night.